In this video, we're going to talk about the flex base property, I'm sorry, the flex basis property in Flexbox and what that has to do with it affects the width and the height. Now you might be asking, well, why do we need that if we already have these two properties right here? Why do we need flex basis? Well, the reason is flex basis does a much better job with auto sizing, a much better job of auto sizing to the content. So in this case, in this little box here, the content is this box one text. We may also have an image, whatever we put inside here. It does a really good job of auto sizing to that content, which we're of course not doing right now. We just specified a height and width of 100 pixels. So the first thing we're going to work against is the width. And how do you know that? Well, if you have the flex direction set to row, then what happens is flex basis will work against the width. But if we set this to column, which we'll do in a few minutes, then flex basis will work against the height. That's the way it works. So just remember that row affects the width and column affects the height. That's the way it works. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna specify flex basis now. And let's just put this in here. There we go. And let's set this to 400 pixels. And there you can see flex basis overrides this width property right here. And in this case, of course, we have both specified. Now, there's rarely a time when you're going to have both of these specified. You will usually have one or the other, but not both. But I just wanted to show you how the override works. Now, let's say we want to auto size the content. We put well, let's go ahead and put in auto. Whoops. And it didn't work. Well, the reason is width now gets priority because it has the specific pixel count. So it actually overrides flex basis in this example. So that's why the box did not auto size to our box one content, this text here. The way to do that is simply just to get rid of the width property. So we'll do that. And there you can see, look how nicely that auto sizes. And let's watch this now. Let me resize this. See, it stays consistent throughout keeps it auto sized very nicely. So that's really the power of flex basis. And once again, you'll rarely have both. Now, as I said before, what if you want to work against the height? Well, we need to put column up here. So let's set everything back. Let's go ahead and put our width back and let's get rid of flex basis for now. We'll put it back in a second. So we're starting from scratch again. So let's set this to comp, whoops, keep mistyping today. Set this to column. And now let's go ahead and put in flex basis. And let's set this to 400 pixels. Take a look at that. Now we're dealing with height. Like I said, flex basis now will operate against the height because we have columns specified here. We got 400 pixels. And this is gonna work exactly the same way with the override. Let's put in auto and we know it's not gonna work. Nope, it didn't. So we have to get rid of height and now it auto sizes in terms of the height to our content and it does it very nicely. So that is how flex basis works. Okay, that's really it for the properties. Now we're actually going to do a layout in the next video. See you then.